I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. You've seen us make some massive weapons, some of these things incredibly long, huge, heavy objects. We've been getting away from that, trying to get things that we can swing easier. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to make the most requested thing this show has ever had, Chaos Eater from Darksiders. We're going to be building this entire thing from steel. Ilya is going to be doing large repose panels, huge forgings of the blade, the handle. The entire piece will stand taller than a man and it'll be very difficult, if not impossible, for us to lift. So for the blades on this sword, we're actually gonna be using railroad track. We've got the foot, the web, and the cap of the rail. We're gonna cut the cap off. I'm gonna cut it in half. That's gonna give Ilya two large sections to forge from, and then we'll be able to grind and heat treat them before we assemble everything. You often see us use a plasma torch. One of the primary advantages of this type of cutting is that it'll strike an arc giving us instant heat. If we were to do this kind of the old school way using a gas torch, we'd have to preheat the metal, bring it up to high temperature and blow oxygen across it to cut it. In this case, we're able to just pull a trigger, it strikes an arc, uses the high pressure from the air to blow the plasma through and blow all the material out of your way and cut the piece very quickly. The way I'm going to make Chaos Ear is going to be very similar to the Optimus Prime sword we built several months ago. That means I'll have two blades, one and two, connected together to a central tang. And the blades are going to be attached to the tang, and the overlays will be covering the empty space between the two. To make the blades, I have two pieces of train track, like this. So I'm going to heat up the train track, forge them out into the blade on the 2B power hammer. The most difficult part of this build will be the Melting Skulls panels. Those will be made out of 14 gauge mild steel using a relatively innovative version of chasing and repousing. One of the things that has to happen before Ilya can forge these blades, he's got to take the material and create a normal or regular shape. Within a regular shape like he has, he has to be careful as he drives the material down on itself that he doesn't create any overlaps, which could cause problems in the forging later. So for the chaos heater, it really would be nice to just plasma cut a lot of these parts out and make them done. But we're not gonna go that route at all. There's only one piece that we're actually gonna use the plasma for, and that's the handle portion. We're gonna do an oval for the bottom of it, and then we're gonna do a large oval that we dish onto that flat piece, weld all the way around, giving us a solid form that we can really weld all these little diagonal pieces onto. We'll create some of the detail in here with just a TIG welder. You can see I went ahead and drew one oval. What I have to do now is just make another one, leave the central circle the same, scale the outer oval up using the center of the circle as my base point for scaling so that when we do the dishing, everything matches. So that's it, guys. That's basically all I have to draw. But while we're here, I might as well show you guys how we laid out the entire length of the piece. So we're gonna make the overall length from tip to tip 72 inches. That's six feet. I went ahead and let Ilya know the general thickness from point to tip is about 7.5 inches. So when he's doing his forging, he has something to work from. And then we're gonna go ahead and base everything off of that, weld this central panel that he's gonna represent and chase. It's a lot of work, guys. After many heats of drawing out the rail track, to his desired length, Ilya can now start on actually forming the blade. As he mentioned before, he has to do two of these. He's gonna start by just pinching out material that'll become the edge, moving all the way along the blade, keeping the basic profile that will then crisp up later using a plasma and grinders.
I'm going to be doing all the beveling on the power hammer itself because given the thickness of the blade is going to be much too burdensome to do it completely by hand. Now using a very heavy hammer, Ilya moves to the anvil to set up the bends that will establish where the points will be on the blade. Once I have a significant progress on the blades, it's time to start working on the overlay panels. I'm choosing 14 gauge mild steel. The reason for that being the overlays will not be responsible for any of the structural integrity of the sword. The mild steel is fairly easy to move hot, it's easy to move cold. The first thing you have to do is gain some height, which later on will be pushed down to gain the form. I start out by first marking my areas. There's going to be a big skull here. There's a smaller skull with a prominent jaw right here. There's some skull going on here, and here's the jaw claw type structure. I'm gonna utilize a technique called raising. I'm going to heat up sections of it and start gaining height using this stake over here and my armoring hammer. When a person raises a piece of sheet metal, they hammer the sides and not the center, slowly shrinking the material around the stake and consequently raising the untouched portion up. All right, as you can see here, I have one of the blades for the Chaos Eater sword. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the torch, cut off a lot of this excess material so we can get right to the grinders after this. Ilya is going to continue to form this panel using hammer and chisel. He's also going to be using a torch to spot heat areas. The areas where the torch hits, the material will move very easily. The cool areas around the outside will act as a resist and allow him to get deep forms.
there is so much grinding for this sword, everybody in the shop will be tag teaming throughout the next few days. Now that he's completed the form doing chasing and repose, he's going to go back through and planish the surfaces and create new textures. This is going to even out the entire piece and visually make it complete. Ilya is going to go through and flute the top of the skull to match the original design. After Bill did the rough profiling on the blade, I've moved on to grinding the flat in the edge. Now I have about two hours in on the first side. I've ground a deep hollow all the way down the center, following the profile of the blade. I then established a really steep bevel in the edge because after I looked at our reference photo, I noticed that it wasn't just a hollow ground edge from the back all the way to the front. It does have that steep bevel. So now let's go ahead and move on to side two. Working from a large piece of stock, Billy is now going to make the center section that's going to support the entire blade. He'll take the excess material from the tank, since it's large enough, cut it off and create the pommel. Creating the pommel, they'll also go to the cone anvil. This is something we haven't used on the show yet, but it allows us to go through and true the inside radiuses on large forgings. This has been such a massive build, guys, that even after the camera stopped rolling, Billy and I basically pulled an all-nighter just to get this thing assembled. So I did my best to get some GoPro footage of the assembly. Whew, what a task.
To make sure that our main panel section doesn't warp while we put it together, we have to make sure we tack it in different places, spreading out the heat evenly so we don't have any spots that pop loose. Once we get it tacked in place, we can move outside, use a very large torch to heat up sections, bend it where we need to go, and then we can finish out our weld. With our Repuzade plates now welded on and the blending has started, Leah is now going to move on to start fitting the guard and some of the other pieces. Dismissed. With everything now assembled, this piece is much too heavy to lift and go to our sanders. So I'm just going to use a hand grinder and remove some of the bulk of the weld, go back in and blend everything smooth. And this is Chaos Eater. You're welcome. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.